Shalom. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect to the brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. Double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with a follow-up lesson that I did earlier today that was entitled, We Have Heard a Rumor from the Lord. So we're going to go into something because the Most High does not view time the way man does. The Most High does not view time the way man does. And I'm going to explain something. Let's go to Hosea 6 and 1. Hosea 6 and 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord Yahweh, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. And the key word right here is heal. How do we get healed? By the word. Who is that? That's Yahweh Shai. He is the physician. So that's a key point to understanding how the Most High is viewing this time frame right here. Well, let's continue. <coughs> After two days, he will revive us. How? By his son, Yahweh Shai, whom you ignorantly call Jesus. He has to die and shed his blood. He is a sacrificial lamb for the elect of the house of Israel. So this is important. We're going to take our time with this. After two days, he will revive us. So two days is approximately 2,000 years to the most high. And in the third day, he will raise us up. And he, Salak, excuse me, and we shall live in his sight. So, <clears throat> Now, approximately 2,000 years is what this is describing when it says after two days he will revive us. So the way he's going to revive us is through his son's resurrection and his son's return back to the earth, the second return of Yahweh Shai. So the day that Yahweh Shai died on the, on the cross, then we're in the third day now. So this is not talking about a full 3,000 years. It's talking about in the third day. So we're, we've, transitioned, we've transitioned into the 3,000 years after uh, Yahweh Shai shed his blood for Israel. So we're living in the third day, but we don't know the exact day Yahweh Shai will return and raise up Israel <coughs> to everlasting life, deliverance, and the kingdom. You see? So we're in that 3,000-year period, or the third day. But that doesn't necessarily mean we know the exact day. Let's go from there. It's 2 Peter 3 and 8. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. See? After two days, Hosea 6 and 2, after two days will he revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. So we've been in that third day, or the 3,000th year, ever since Yahweh Shai, shed his blood for the children of Israel, for the elect. But we don't know the exact day. Second Peter 3 and 8, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all 
should come to repentance. And we know based on precepts, the elect, the one third remnant of the house of Israel is going to come to repentance. And the 144,000 is at the top of the pyramid of the elect of the house of Israel. Here's another key point, 2 Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So you cannot make tarry to turn unto the Lord. Let's go back because this previous lesson, I talked about this period that we're in of Jacob's trouble and then going into a judgment period. So the Most High is not dealing with exact time frames that we're accustomed to. Unless your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. And that's through the men of the Lord, through the prophets. A rumor shall come both come one year and after that, in another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. <clears throat> so we're in the year of prophecy right now, Jacob's trouble. And it says in another year. That doesn't give you an exact 24 month period. That's going in to that 24 month period. Let's read it again. Jeremiah 51 and 46. Unless your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. So you can't put an exact day of, the, of, of, that, of each year. So we're in that first 12 months, and then we don't know where in the subsequent 12 months when things are going to transition into a judgment period or a judgment zone. And hopefully I'm not being ambiguous. So I just want to make that clear. You cannot make Terry to turn unto the Lord because there are some wicked Jakes out there that will try to gain the system or they're going to, they're going to try to make Terry to repent and come into this, this truth. And turn unto the Lord. <clears throat> so let's go here. I'm not going to belabor the point. The one third is going to understand this. You are not to make Terry to turn unto the Lord. Sirach 5 and 1. Set thy heart upon thy goods. And say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. To walk in the ways of thy heart. And say not. Who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely avenge. The Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Verse 3 again. And say not, Who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not, his mercy is great. Verse 6 again. And say not, his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him. And in his indignation resteth upon sinners. Make no tarrying to turn unto the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shad, and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So no one knows the exact day of vengeance. All right? But we're in the year of Bible prophecy in Jacob's trouble. And then we're going to transition into Armageddon and judgment. All right. So I'll just leave it at that. 
So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babao. Shalom.